it's still good afternoon or that's nice. nice. That's nice. And uh, yeah. Welcome to, to the, the so, Does she know you're welcome? Yeah, excuse no, me. It's a, no, it's Eric. Right. Can, can, you get, can I get everybody's attention? Excuse me. Uh, good evening. Welcome uh, to the uh, June 5th, 2013 work session for the Planning Commission of the City of Brookhaven. Let's let the record show that four members, uh, Commissioner Hundred, Hess, Cameron, and Siegel are present for the work session. And three are not here right now. Um, Commissioner Frankhor, Schmidt, and uh, Funny. Following the agenda, if anybody's got cell phones going, please silence them or turn them off. Thank you. Appreciate that. First is uh, an organizational and procedural issues. Um, I would just like to say that um, we appreciate the commission's patience as we work through our software issues. So if you get repeated re requests from us, or if we're inundating you with paperwork, we apologize for that. But we're trying to work out our software bugs. So thank you very much. Actually, actually if I may speak, uh, yeah. I think you, you got it right the first time. I just didn't read carefully when I got it from the first uh, senator, and then it was came from you. I didn't read the, the third paragraph, so I think it's working correctly. I, I sent an email, so I think you're fine. Well, thank you. We're working on it. So once we get this up and going, it's going to be a very good tool for us to use. But right now, we're working through all the bugs. So thank you very much. Good. I guess it's just so everybody knows, this is a work session. So we will not have public comment during the work session. Uh, the public hearing will be at 7 p.m. It'll be out in the in, in May, May room. So I think we're all set for that. Do we have any unfinished business from the last work session? Which we were in May. Mm -hmm. Okay, so the business at hand this evening is a discussion of the Brookhaven Peach Tree overlay and the underlying land use as, as applies to the proposed text amendments um, for ordinance, I guess that's ID 1072 RZ 13-02 text amendment. And with that, I'll turn it over to Ms. Kennedy. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, uh, the purpose of the meeting tonight, of the work session, is to, just to kind of give you an overview of, of the reason we're here. Um, and we'll move into the, the hearing at 7 o'clock, and we'll actually have the actual public hearing on the text amendment. And first, let me tell you that a text amendment goes through the same procedure that a rezoning does. We are required to post the notice in the paper, um, and it's subject to the, the same uh, procedures uh, that zoning are subject to. And that is, it goes through the Planning Commission for recommendation, it is open for a public hearing from the public, and then a recommendation is passed on to the Council from the Planning Commission for the Council to then have a public hearing and, and take final action on, on the text amendment. Um, Sort of some background and the reason we're here is that some time ago in mid-2000, DeKalb County adopted an overlay zoning um, in this area. And I brought this map to kind of identify the area for you. The city is about 12 square miles. Susan, can we move that so that a little closer? Yeah, do you mind? Sure. I, mean, no I will attempt to do and this. And since this is a work session. All right, this is a work session. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully it won't fall. Can you see it? Yes. Yeah, is that better? Like blocking the camera. If that I'm right in front of the camera. Okay. okay. Let me put it right over here. Okay. Right here. Well, it's important for those people to see it. They need to see it. All right, say where you are. We've seen it. We've seen it, right? Since it's a work session. We're okay. You need some water? Excuse me. Yes. It always happens at the worst time. Yes, <coughs> Maybe we can um, <coughs> cut that out of the filming. <laughs> we'll let it cut that. <coughs> Hopefully, I won't be blocking your view. <coughs> Maybe I can come around this, to this other side. How's that? <coughs> Thank you. Good. Okay, I'm going to try. <clears throat> My voice is coming back. <clears throat> okay, so the city of Brookhaven is about 12 square miles. 
The overlay is this area outlined in red and blue. And it's about 0.75 square miles. <clears throat> and there's a close to about 468 acres in the overlay area. The city has about 31 <clears throat> zoning districts. And in the overlay, there are about 17 base zones. So <clears throat> what happened in this area is over a period of time, the zoning that was put in place was based on the original zoning categories in DeKalb County. <clears throat> so there's a base zoning on all these different parcels. Um, there's about 17 of them. So what happened is an overlay was put in place called the Brookhaven Peach Tree Overlay. <clears throat> and it kind of centered around a livable centers initiative, which kind of spurred from the MARTA station. Um, <clears throat> when you do a livable centers initiative, you have to tie transportation to land use. So that was the nexus to generate this creative vision for this area. So it's a set of kind of guiding design principles and zoning regulations um, that are put in place on top of the base zoning. So it, it's, it's very layered because you have the base zoning, <clears throat> then you have conditional zoning because there could be base zoning that's been affected by a zoning case. So in other words, I'm just using this as an extreme example. Let's say you have um, uh, a C2 zoning, <clears throat> neighborhood commercial zoning. And let's say that the um, zoning conditions that went into a place said, um, this zoning is approved, subject to the site plan, but we are not allowing you to have <clears throat> a veterinary clinic. I'm just throwing that out there. That's the condition that would be in place. And then you have an overlay that came on top of that, and the overlay said, you know, these are the uses that are allowed, these are the setbacks that are allowed, these are the design standards that are allowed. Um, in any event, the, the whole premise was to take land use and transportation and combine them together um, for this overlay. If I, if I, without looking at it, it goes from the Fulton County line, the city line on the, on the left side, on mm -hmm. right there, and just past Oglethorpe, is that correct? Oglethorpe would be, I believe, Purple. here. Right. Yes. Okay. And it goes up to this area. Right. Thank you. And I'm sorry, the street names are not on this no, map, but so we're getting there. Um, and what, what would be the bottom, more or less, just a, a landmark? We don't mind like the BP station? Or? Probably the Kroger. Just, just the past the Kroger, Bel Air is right on the edge. It's the Fulton County, County line. <laughs> <laughs> County line yeah. okay. Okay. And basically, um, it, they actually, when, when the overlay went into place, it first was the focus around the Mars station for kind of more density, and then there was a creation for a sub area one and a sub area two. So the most, the most density is along the major arterial, and then it gets less dense as you go outside of that area. So the, the plan identifies sub area one and sub area two, and there's a lot of different design features in the overlay. <clears throat> so along the way, when you have a creative vision, and then you have a text that you try to use to implement it, there are gonna kind of be bumps in the road because it's hard to write a text and an implementation tool that establishes and allows you to implement a vision. So that's kind of where we are in that when this went into place in the mid 2000s, mm -hmm. there, there were market issues and now the market's turning around, so now development's beginning to take place and we're dealing with the implementation aspects of the overlay. <coughs> There was um, a recent Zoning Board of Appeals case dealing with a density aspect of which the, the staff upheld the DeKalb County's decision, and that case is still underway, which kind of promulgated the council to say, well, let's, let's put a moratorium in place in this area to look at whether or not we need to consider changes to the overlay for implementation purposes. So a moratorium was put into place in March for 90 days. That 90-day time frame will end on June 25th. And 
Through the course of that moratorium, the direction to the staff was to meet with um, stakeholders that were involved in the Brookhaven Peachtree overlay process, to meet with former DeKalb County employees that worked on the overlay and implemented the overlay, to place a link on the city's website, to acquire input from the community, to take all of those comments and um, study those comments and focus on technical aspects of changes that may or may not need to happen relative to the overlay. So with that, we held a council work session. I presented to the council the collective comments from all of those parties that I described. And the, um, the focus and the direction from the council was to focus on parking for restaurants, to focus on um, defining story. In that, in the overlay, there's a requirement that you have to be at least two stories. And so it's my understanding the concern has been that someone not try to build a fake story as the second story, but to actually build a story that's usable. So henceforth the reason for trying to further define what a story is. Um, Susan, on our side, we would define it as it has to be a usable second story, right? Not just like a fake second story with a desk and chair or something like that. Right, and, and in the definition and in the text, we did go to that, um, but then it, then it was kind of, um, there was a lot of discussion about well, what if you have an outdoor area and a balcony area, and what if you have an, an eating area outside, and, and should the second floor be the same square footage as the first floor? So initially on its face, when you think about it, your, your mind, or actually my mind actually went to, well, the second floor probably should be 100% of the first floor. But then if you look at how the architecture may affect the build-out of the second floor, um, when you look at your text, you'll see that's the reason that we put the 75% rule in there. Um, and we did say that if you had an outdoor balcony area, that that area could not be included in that, in that space. So that's the reason for that. So we increased parking requirements for restaurants. Um, and we included, um, the, the points that were made was that it appeared as though there were only 10 spaces allowed or required for restaurants. So what we did is increase that requirement for restaurants and we also included um, the area that might be included for outdoor dining in the square footage requirement so that an example would be if you had a 5,000 square foot dining area that's the indoor and outdoor space, um, the way the requirement's written now is that you would have 40 spaces for that rather than what I'm being told was 10. Um, we didn't want to do anything to create a sea of parking. We still wanted to encourage pedestrian activity but provide enough parking. So what we've written right now, and that was just an example, if you had 5,000 square feet, it would be 40 spaces. So that's what's in the text amendment right now. So we dealt with parking for restaurants. We dealt with, that was the direction. We dealt with um, story. Um, the other component was there was concern over how you measure height at the front facade and the, and the uh, Brookhaven overlay from the sidewalk. So we um, dealt with that from the finish grade of the sidewalk and that's in the definition. That's in the actual your package as well. So let me think for a second. We did parking, height, story, um, signs, uh, si sidewalk signs. There was a um, some concern that sidewalk signs were allowed in the district for uh, tenants, and so we did put provisions in there for easel uh, sandwich signs and with different criteria on what they could be constructed of, how large they could be, how tall they could be, where they could be set. That's all in your package. Um, so what did I leave out? And the last thing, of course, is density. And um, in my mind, the way the, I'm sorry, and, 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 and density, no, and density you did not address it. No, well, actually, I'm going to go to that, but Mr. <coughs> no, go ahead. I, I, have a, I, I don't want to nitpick that. I'm just trying to get an idea of what we're talking right. about. Um, there's, a, there's a restaurant on Memorial Drive, uh, six, feet, six feet under. So they have a restaurant on the bottom, and then they have a rooftop dining area with little portable heating units at the school. Mm -hmm. So 
under this, would that be counted because it's heated? And then would those, you know, how would you address something like that? If I, I don't know if a restaurant wanted to put a, a, a rooftop dining area. If we, the way it's currently written, mm -hmm. if that area was rooftop, but it wasn't actually part of the construction of the building, and it was rooftop and it was kind of open air and heated, mm -hmm. we would not include that in the second story. Okay. The way it's currently so it, had, it would have to be covered. Yes. Yes. Okay. That's Thank nice. you. Okay. Um, density. So, and then um, the last major aspect of the technical technical change, which was kind of the catalyst to this, was the density question. And when you read through the um, overlay text, um, there's language that says if there is a conflict that the underlying zoning controls. Um, and, and that's clear to me. However, the direction was for me to add additional language to make that further clarification for other readers. <coughs> so that's the purpose of adding the two additional sentences that, sa that says that if the overlay provisions and the underlying zoning regulations are competing, that the underlying zoning is what it falls to. That's so, part five that's in this. In this that's, that's right. So can um, you give us an example, please? Well, an example would be if um, there was an apartment complex proposed in the overlay and they needed to know what their density could be. In the overlay, it, the overlay is silent to that. However, the zoning district that is beneath that may say eight per acre or it may say 30 per acre whatever it says is what the controlling density would be now the reason that um, your language also says just zoning and not zoning district is kind of what i was alluding to earlier when i said there could be a condition of zoning there could have been a condition of zoning from a previous case that would have said this apartment area can only be six per acre or 14 per acre or whatever so that's the reason the term zoning is there instead of zoning district. Right, so that the so the conditional case apply and supersedes. Right, the, and you can't you know. usurp conditional zoning without rezoning. So, mm -hmm. um, and then the, the very last one really is just a typo. I, mean, I hate to say it on the record, but the word pubic is in there, so we, <laughs> so we switched it to public. We thought we'd take that time to clean it up. <laughs> we thought that was pretty. No, that the correction was. Very appropriate. So. I don't think we would have trouble getting that one through, but I thought it was an interesting. Uh, <laughs> so my apologies for that. But um, so basically, the um, the purpose of this exercise was not to affect the basic tenets of the overlay. It was to look at some particular implementation points that were brought about and discussed from you know vetting, getting input from the public, getting input from those who had who had been involved in the creation of it and to just to deal with some basic technical aspects and that was the exercise so tonight when you go into your public hearing um, I'll go through um, the exercise of you know how we got here why we're here and what we're doing and we, you will open up the, the floor for the public so that we can hear what the public has to say so you can make an informed recommendation to the council now when we when we go into the public hearing and we make our recommendation mm -hmm. are we Making our, I guess we could uh, we make a recommendation. Are we voting on each item independently, or is this a single amendment? This is a single text amendment. This, this is that? a single text amendment. Well, we can, we, I realize we can make motions to amend. Right. Part of it. This is a single text amendment, and you, as a, as a body, can either make a recommendation to prove it as written, mm -hmm. or you may make a recommendation to revise language. Mm -hmm. Um, in any event, um, whatever you recommend, we'll, we'll move forward to the council for their for their disposition. Well, I have some questions, but before I ask mine, uh, Jack, do you have any? Um, <clears throat> well, let's let's go through your questions first. Okay. Uh, 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 I have a question for you. Would you like to? No, I always have questions, but I want to. I don't suspect that you're going. Well, no, no, no. no. <laughs> I, I don't make it clear. I'm not so that the the items that were addressed in here they came out of the work session. That was kind of a, a it, it was it wasn't a list you were given. It was part of the work session. 
The, the list. I'm trying to understand why there are other items. Okay. Um, once I had the meetings with different stakeholders and we gathered all the community input, we had a link on the website where people right. were able to send it, everything in. Right. Um, and once I had meetings with different stakeholders and former DeKalb County personnel and um, from the uh, public input, I created a master list that was provided to the council okay. of all of the input that was received. And in that meeting, the direction came from that list to deal with these certain items. So, so the direction from the council was, yes, move forward with the text amendment on these items. Okay, so so that, it, that's how it came about. So, so there might be other items that need to be addressed, but there was that wasn't the direction you were given from the work session. Correct. That the, or from the council meeting. Correct. Okay. And, and let me just make this comment. There were other items on the list that were items perhaps <coughs> that could not be addressed by text amendment for this. For example, um, and, and not to, uh, I'm trying to think of the, the, the appropriate way to address this. There were there were comments that related to the fact that states, for example, someone may have good business and not enough areas to park in, and then there was concern over well where they were parking or um, things that are kind of outside the scope of the text. Okay. So uh, there were some things that we we can't address. Um, just because the nature of, of, of the comment, but but those were were included on the list. Okay. Uh, keep going. Or? Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well, the, at some point, and I, I, we are going to the city of Brookhaven is going to take a more comprehensive look at the comprehensive land use plan and the overlay itself. Um, to one, do we have a time, has a, has a council set a time frame for that? And will we, or is it appropriate for this commission to hold public hearings to get public input prior to, to, that, to the work beginning? Um, my, there's two part answer there. Um, the first is that, um, there are two RFPs that the city plans to issue, request for proposals. The first request for proposal is an economic development action plan um, related to Beaver Highway. We have not released that yet. The second RFP that we plan to issue is a request for proposal for a comprehensive plan. And that will include uh, land use, transportation, um, parks and recreation. Um, it will include a short-term work program, a five-year short-term work program. Um, and we hope to issue those RFPs in the next few months. I can't give you an exact date, yeah, but, in time. Um, but we hope the, the Economic Development Action Plan most likely will come first, um, and then we would like to fold that Economic Development Action Plan into the comp plan. Um, so, so that's the plan. Um, so we, we do hope to issue those RFPs in the next few months. And then when that gets underway, that will be the time to start getting community input. Um, and we, we want and encourage community input. We'll look at issues and opportunities and all of the things throughout the city. Um, so that's the appropriate time and method to gather input through that process. Is that when we may take the overlay and actually extend it all the way the rest to, to the end of Brookhaven? Is that an option during that process? Um, it just seems to make sense. I don't know. Well, the, I the, know there's not a whole lot there. but The Lanny's plan discussion will drive the policy decision on the entire city <laughs> and what you should or should not focus on. And then once once the land use plan, comprehensive plan is adopted, then we would then have to go back into our zoning ordinance to create the laws and regulations and tools to implement the policy that will be created. Does that make is that clear? Susan, can I just go through the time <coughs> frame here? So if in let's just say three months the uh, the RFPs put out for the economic development action plan. 
how long do you expect that plan in us? So you get the RFP, you have to make decisions, hire somebody, and they have public meetings and so on. What's the length of that process? Do you use? Well, I mean, that's hard to say, um, and so don't hold me to it, but yeah. I would say that, you know, I would certainly think that you would complete that in four to six months. I'm, I'm just, I'm, you know, it's, it's hard to say. Sure. Um, and since the comp plan would be based on the results of that plan, mm -hmm. we could expect the RFP maybe to come out sometime while that plan's in progress, but the comp plan work won't really begin until the economic uh, action plan is largely in place? Well, you know, we want to fold that economic development action plan into the plan. I think there are probably components of the land use plan and the transportation plan and the parks and recreation and master plan that could be occurring as that's being worked on. Um, and the comprehensive plan will take longer to do than the economic development action plan. So realistically, it'll be a year from now before we have a comp plan? Possibly. Yeah. Okay. And, and, and so that, that's just, Conjecture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I understand. It's probably going to be longer just the way things go. Well, I mean, we actually do have longer to do it based on the law and the oh, fact, okay. you know, that we're a new city, but we don't want to go that far. We want to finish it before the DCA, Department of Community Affairs, deadline is. Okay. We want we want to do it sooner. What is the deadline? Um, I knew you would ask that question. <laughs> and, I, and I actually knew that. Let's see. It is 2014. Um, October of 2014, okay. I think. Okay. It's either October or December of 2014. I think okay. it's October 2014. So we do want to finish it before they say because we two years from we want to do that. Yeah. Right, so in in the in in these amendments, there's some specific things like the 75 percent square footage for the second story mm -hmm. versus the first, or mm -hmm. 125 square feet. How are those developed? Are those developed with just the best knowledge and experience of the planning department? Is that this is your the planning department's recommendation? Mm -hmm. From your all's experience? Well, it's, it's a, a combination of factors. Um, well, you know, initially it is, well, how in the world do you define the second story? How in the world do you keep from having someone use a fake fake second story? Um, and we, we actually had some input from the Cap County. Um, I think their figures were, I think they might have been less than that, I'm thinking. Um, I met with our chief building official. We talked about construction aspects. Um, so. We've edited it that way. Okay. Through, through, um, you know, because really my first reaction was, what should be 100%? But then when you start looking at, well, how do you realistically make that happen? Um, right. That was my, my first know. reaction. And I thought yeah. we were working well, at an atrium. Yeah. Is that a second store? Is it, you know, you can't use it. I mean, is that a. Uh, well, and we did have, we did have those that were concerned about, well, what if someone says that a mezzanine is a second story and it's totally not usable? So we, there, there were a lot, there was a lot of discussion with, you know, different people um, to, to get us to the point that we're, that we're at. Um, and I, I want to talk a little bit about the sign, the sign, because mm -hmm. there was nothing was addressed in the original overlay other than it said whatever was in, in the applicable zoning or sign ordinance. I think that's correct. And I don't think you'll um, find that there. Yeah. And, um, I, and, and in here, I mean, we have what is essentially a two, a, you know, six square foot sign, mm -hmm. basically a two foot wide and three foot high, which is the mm -hmm. signs, which take up a lot of, I mean, two feet take up. It's the sidewalk, if the typical sidewalks, I think, or is the overlay different? The overlay square, requires wider sidewalks. Because five foot, there's no way. I mean, I, I mean, the first thing that was in my mind is walking down the street with a stroller. Mm -hmm. My grandchildren mm -hmm. um, and holding a you know a toddler and like you know next to it you can't and I just see this lineup of signs. Right. So here the city is giving me as a pedestrian mm -hmm. a walkway, a pedestrian walkway with interest hopefully, mm -hmm. and then taking it away by letting the restaurants put in signs. So I was trying to understand the mm -hmm. you know, why do we why would we allow it, and to how much is there. The ordinance says only 36 inches is required. Well, the 36 inches is the ADA safe passage. Um, so that's the reason that's put in there, so that that's, it's not an obstructed passage. Yeah, right. right, so that's why that's in there. Um, and, and basically, I think that the, the thought process behind it was looking at pedestrian activity that they're, they're wanting to encourage in this area. 
um, and just and then having a human scale with having the sidewalk signs there. Um, and so, and the request was, you know, to include and incorporate some provisions to allow that in this overlay. So this was an attempt to do that. But do we know how, what, how deep the sidewalks are in the overlay? Well, they're required to be wider. I think I recall reading some things that call for nine foot wide, is what I recall. There may be some that are there that are not that wide um, because they're already there, they're pre-existing. Um, so that's the reason for, for keeping the ADA requirement in there. But if we have, but, but there are pre-existing sidewalks that are only the five foot that mm -hmm. was required to go, and then you put in a sign that yes, you're down to the three feet, which is pretty narrow. Mm -hmm. It's pretty narrow. Mm -hmm. um, to, and, does, and would not encourage, I mean, again, if you saw one sign, mm -hmm. You know, I, you could walk around. You know, a, a parent with a child in a stroller would walk around it. If you saw a lineup of signs because you had restaurant after restaurant after restaurant, you'd be weaving in and out. I don't know if anybody else. Could. That was my. I was just wondering where that came from. That's that's where it came from. Okay. Anybody else? Okay, you want? You want to try? Well, fortunately, the, the restaurants and the stores are relatively new, so I think what they're trying to do is looking forward. I mean, the, Five foot si sidewalks in back when this was strictly residential community, and now that we're mixed use to everything that's built going forward, uh, has to have wider sidewalks mm -hmm. to accommodate the sun. I think they're, mm -hmm. if I understand you correctly, right. you're trying to get a leash on. Mm -hmm. Jack? Yeah, I, I wish I had taken my computer so I had all the information here, but basically, the sidewalk, they have set, the overlay sets up sidewalk zone and in the overlay district along the specified streets like Dresden and Peachtree where you're going to have the commercial likely. Um, the sidewalk zone is usually about uh, 15 feet and that consists of a five foot plant strip along the street so you can have street trees and some street furniture and then a 10 foot sidewalk. Uh, on some streets it gets I think condensed to about uh, 12 feet or something because I remember there's some places the sidewalk can go down to about eight feet. Uh, so, yeah, so we are talking about yeah, along Dresden, it's then. eight feet is, is the minimum sidewalk width, plus you have a five foot plant zone, a tree zone. So, um, there is ample width on the sidewalk. I would say that one of the way, reasons that sidewalk signs are currently permitted under the overlay is the perception that you know we want street life, a sense of animation, and when you have cafe tables, the sidewalks are deep enough where there's a recess in the building so you can put cafe tables out by the sidewalk and, and you can have a, a sandwich board that says, you know, special today, lunch special, XXX. It just creates an animation and a street scape that's fun to be in. The converse is what you said. You start cluttering this with junk and uh, people, because a sandwich board sign is allowed, everybody wants to have one. So you have, you know, storefronts every 20 right. feet, and you get start getting people. They don't have any specials. It's just um, the uh, the laundromat, and they just put laundromat out there. Kind of the just attention, to get your getter, attention. Yeah. So, yeah. so then you start tripping over them and their visual okay. clutter. So it really, I don't know how you regulate that to create the animation and the liveliness you like, but to keep the clutter. Uh, and the debris aspect of it out. But I, I understand your concerns. No, no, but, but, I, but I appreciate it. So there is a counter, I was trying to find a countervailing argument yeah. for why we would recommend mm -hmm. cluttering the sidewalks. And the countervailing argument, as I understand what you're saying, is that it's not clutter always, it's, it's, it creates vibrant. Yes. Exactly. I think one of the beautiful things That's about walking along a district like this is you come back up to a restaurant and they have their menu out there. Now sometimes you might have it posted on a stand right outside the door, but other times you'll see it on a little uh, side, A-frame sign kind of thing. And I think of um, like Columbus, um, Asheville, Savannah, Charleston, and you think of um, the use of sidewalk signs there, and I don't know if you frequent those areas, but they tend to use those in those pedestrian oriented areas. So. And, but it is also true in those cities, particularly the old cities, where the sidewalks are narrower mm -hmm. and more broken up because mm -hmm. they're brick, it is harder to, yes. to, mm -hmm. to navigate around them. But I understand the point, and there will be some, although there will be some 
narrow places, yeah. it's unlikely you're going to get 10 restaurants in a row, new restaurants in a place that hasn't had any new development, and, and any new development would have the new requirements. And, and we did not write this just for restaurants because right. we couldn't do that. So it's actually open That's to boutiques. And I just wanted to clarify that. Okay, it's thank you. It's open to, to That's right. It was just the parking was for the, just the restaurants. Correct. Speaking of the visual clutter, though, can they tie balloons on it or have any type of? No embellishment. So we did put that on here. Right. Yeah. yeah, like that. And no lights. No, media. Right. Yeah, no neon. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay, well, let's see. So that was, uh, that was, those were my questions. So, uh, John, I think yes. you, uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I have one question. And, uh, I mean, most of these are pretty straightforward. I appreciate your, you know, obviously, the, the uh, typos and then, you know, the, the definition of what conflict means. I understand that and then doing the part two. But then the one that caught my eye was the building pipes one in part one. Um, and I read through it, and what I saw was, without getting into details of it, somebody made a point to try to really, really define that, and, and I don't want to get into the, into the details of this particular point, mm -hmm. or this particular amendment request, but I want to understand that when somebody makes a request like this, where does this come from, I mean, why would, because I, you know, I, I got this document, mm -hmm. it is outlines and thank you for summarizing. But then I went to the actual document, which is 500 pages. Mm -hmm. So somebody went through the trouble of going through 500 pages to make this one specific request, and I want to know where did it come from? Where did it come from? It? And I'm not taking on this person or this request, but oh, I, when I'll things like this come up in, in the future, how, how, how I, I, can, I can tell you exactly where that came from. Well, I mean, we can talk No, no, I mean, it, no, I, I, can, I can, I can, you know. But just in general. No, I, and I can tell you exactly where, where that came from, and that is um, one of the first things that the council asked for me to do was to meet with former county personnel who were charged with implementing this overlay for the county. Mm -hmm. And um, in doing that, um, when you have the opportunity to meet with people that have tried to implement regulations, they are aware of problems that they have tried to um, find a way to implement. And this is one of the very, uh, one of the biggest things that the county found to be an issue with. And it's like, how in the world do you measure height with with the facade treatment along the major road? Um, and so. That was identified as one of the key issues that they were having trouble with that needed clarification. So that that's where it came from. It's so I mean, this, you know, this, I can only imagine this would come into effect with a structure on a very steep slope. Because so they're talking about mer measuring from top to bottom, and now they're going to use the average. And oh no, this um, this is actually dealing with. Um, are you actually thinking of this text amendment or one that's coming up in the future? Because this is what this is actually coming from the average elevation of the finished sidewalk. Okay. Um, there is um, discussion about a future amendment to height that would be citywide, but that's different from this particular. Well, why, why, would, why would somebody bother to mention the average elevation of those two? I mean, before it just says it's just to be for the, the finished sidewalk, and I know that that's. That can be okay, one end or the other. But somebody took the time to make this the average. And I'm thinking either he's a statistics major or he's got a vested interest. Um, yeah, I can't. I can't answer that. Or a lawyer with yeah. statistics background. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I, I can't. Uh, I don't. I don't really know no. that part of the and, 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 that's what, and, I, and I don't want to get into the nuts and bolts of this particular one, mm -hmm. but. I want to know going forward when I get something like this and I get kind of a head scratcher. It's mm -hmm. like, to what degree do we, are we able to ask the question, what is it that precipitated such a specific request for a change? I think you can ask any question you feel you need to ask to make an informed decision. I mean, that, that's your right as a planning commission member. And, and I'm giving you, you know, the, the best answer I can give you. Um, you know, and it, it sometimes. Um, uh, this is the best answer I can give you. Okay, and this gets back to your point earlier. You know, okay. Do we vote on all of these as a group? We keep going back. That's okay. 
do we vote on all of these amendments as one, or can we pick out one and say, you know, we have some questions about one, well, or, and then we can change from the yeah, I mean, this you, We can offer, anybody can offer a, a motion to amend this. This is one amendment. One amendment. Right. But, and you can vote to say, I'd like to make a, you know, I'm just going to throw this out there. I'd like to make a motion to approve one, two, seven, and four, or, you know, not number eight, or reword number eight, or what. You have the right as the planning commission member to take this text amendment as it is and approve, recommend approval as it is, or with any changes you propose. It's one case, one text amendment with several components that you have the authority to recommend otherwise. So somebody could make a motion to say, we want one parking, in, in part three, item four, we want part one parking space for, for every 125.2. Okay. You, you know, I mean, to, I mean, I, well, I said no, that I because don't. I don't want to, I don't want to yeah. presuppose somebody like he's in, interested in more or less. But you know, I mean, that's what, okay. 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 Jack. Um, well, first, just a, a English editing question because I didn't read the sign ordinance before, and now I did hear this brought up, and now I, I guess I can't understand it. Item number six in the sign order. Sign places for establishments shall not be placed beyond the exterior wall facade for tenant space. Um, I guess I would just ask, what does that mean to everybody? Is that clear? Um, I, I would assume it meant horizontal. You know, I mean, if this is my space, this is my 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 build my building. I can't put a sign over here next to John. Okay. Yes, yeah, and that was the intent. That's it. Okay. I, At least I that's did, how I read that. Yeah, I didn't read the keyword that way, but I, I can't. That. That's, that's how I tried to crack it. <laughs> <laughs> right, so we got three out of four, four outside, right? Three outside, right? Then I think we're uh, we're in, we're in we're okay. safe. Um, the other issue I would come back to is density, and, and Susan's well, we're, we, Susan and I had a discussion about this yesterday. So um, the biggest concern. Jack, let me do this if I could. Ben, off one second. Before we get into the, dent, the question about that, because yes. I think that might be. Can I see if Shannon has a on some No, I'm other good right now. You're okay? Okay, no, then, then I'm sorry. Keep okay, going. Yeah. Okay, I apologize. Thank you. Yeah. And the question just is, a resi we're just talking residential density only. We're just, I should uh -huh. say, it's residential density, because that's what that question is. How many residential, I mean, this is mixed use, so you might have some office, you might have some retail, and then you might have a residential component. And the office and retail is quite clear. Um, there is no specified limit on square footage as long as you meet all the other conditions of the zoning code uh, in terms of floor area that's allowed, setbacks, green spaces, sidewalks, and so on. Um, but the residential, at least, it's been common in zoning ordinances to specify a maximum number of units allowed in a certain zoning district or area units per acre perhaps. So um, the overlay is quiet and does not mention anything, the word density, and does not mention the word residential units per acre or maximum or so on. So I think, um, uh, and Susan has said that her interpretation means that then you go to the underlying zoning district and see what that says, which is R -E -A -R -E -A -R whatever it says, yes. Um, so I guess my, my real question is still, how do you see, how do we deal with it when there are either multiple underlying zoning districts on one parcel that's being redeveloped in the overlay? And a good example is the Wood Properties apartment complex that's going up now. And there was single family R75, there was an RM zoning perhaps, and there was O and I, I know for sure. So you had at least three separate zoning designations there. So that would be one question. And another instance that will be coming up soon and might come up in the multiple cases is where the underlying zoning district is C1. And if I am read it correctly, C1 does not allow residential and therefore has no, does not specify any residential density. So now you have an overlay that at least is allegedly silent on density. And now you go to the underlying district, and that's also silent on density. How do you 
what judgment, how do you resolve So that? the question is really how would the, how would the planning staff right. draw conclusions on that? Well, there, well, there are three Without putting things. anybody on the spot for any. <laughs> yeah. no, well, no, well three, three points that I want to address. And um, I think that on the commercial and office comment that you made, I think we get to the same place, but we look at it a little differently. I think, and not to take exception with what you said, I just oh, want to clarify. Sure. And that's when you said that um, there's really no control over, I, this is not exactly what you said, no. but there's no control over how you would regulate the office and there's commercial no limit on square footage. footage yeah. But I, I disagree with that. Right. But we get to the same place. And, and the reason I disagree with that is that there is a saturation point. There is a saturation point on square footage with office and commercial because it's based on exactly what you said. The lot coverage, oh, yeah, the yeah. height, yeah, I think the parking. So I we agree. Say. So I just I look yeah. at it a little differently in that there is there is a max and it's the saturation point. Right. So no, I, I agree. So with I just that. want to clarify no, that. I was trying to say that. I think you okay. said that in different words. So. Okay. You're so saying you come from it a different place, but you, that's how you would draw your you would draw a recommendation from that. Right. So we come we get to the same place. We just look at how you define it differently. So I just want to clarify that. Then your second. Um, I think your second comment was, well, how do you deal with mixed underlying, you know, overlay or the underlay having mixed zoning? Um, there aren't that many that are mixed. So I'm not sure if you're looking at property lines or overall masterpieces. So there aren't that many that are mixed, but if they are mixed, you would look at that portion of the underlying and what it is, and that would be the controlling factor. I think your third comment was if it's C1 how do you deal with it in that C1 doesn't allow for a single family or multifamily however the overlay says you can have workforce housing or you can have multifamily how would you deal with that I would tell you that if it's not listed in the underlying zoning then you can't have it unless you rezone it to a category that would allow it in the underlying zoning. So again, it's not that you can't have it. Is that your recommendation? If you looked at the underlying zoning, you wouldn't be able to recommend to do it one way or there because there was no, it, no no precedent. It, it, wouldn't it wouldn't be allowed. So the, the avenue would be, mm -hmm. right. well, there's more than one avenue. Right. The avenue would be, number one, to seek a rezoning. Yes. An avenue would be to revise the overlay. There are other avenues, but the current regulations in effect would not allow it. Is that, I mean, what we're hearing is how, I think what we're hearing is how the planning staff would, how the staff would yeah, come to the conclusion, not whether we agree or disagree. Right. Right. <laughs> but that's you know, that's why I want to keep, I mean, we're not trying to agree or disagree. No, no, we're trying we're to trying understand, to understand exactly. where we, yeah. you know. Yeah, and like, you know, the, the overarching issue, I think, is what's legally defensible in court as well, Correct. and we don't have a county attorney or so to opine. It would take some some study, but um, but that's definitely the I think the qu overarching question that we all want to. Well, we do have a city attorney. Yeah, I mean he's not here. Is what I'm saying. And, and, uh, well, and I think one of the responsibilities part. we have is I mean, it's a second responsibility, but certainly it's an implied responsibility. Is if we leave too much unanswered the the zba it winds up at the z more things wind up at the zba the, so the more that is defined the, right if there's something that isn't defined then somebody's going to define it as they see it and go to the zoning board of appeals as opposed to us defining something so we could i mean i assume we want oh yeah i mean we could take a look at something and we could make a request if we feel there's something specific and to to say we would like, we would add, you know, we would ask that the planning staff, you know, make a determination on whether this needs more definition or not. I assume we could. Um, you but there's still has to go to the well, council. <laughs> you you could you can recommend as a as a commission yeah. what you feel is appropriate. Okay. But what I would tell you is that the text you have in front of you 
relative to the density question, is the staff, is, is, is the is staff, the staff, staff no, no, I understand right. that. I, I was talking about in general. No, okay, no, I was, okay. I, we, we were past that. Right, okay, okay. okay. I was talking about in general, right. so if we have something that we we go through the overlay, mm -hmm. and, and one of the members of the commission says, boy, this has never been addressed. We, we know the density has been addressed. Mm -hmm. We already have our answer. We either, and we, we know what we can do. We can either. For example, or, you know, what about these sidewalks? And what are we going to do about ADA and right, you know, right, right. other, other right, things? Right. That's what I'm sorry. We've, right. Yes, sir. Yes, I was trying to keep. <laughs> <laughs> trying to keep everybody, you know, and that's what We're I good. thought. Mm -hmm. Okay. Jack, anything? Uh, no, I, I'm satisfied with all the uh, divisions and okay. the answers on the divisions. Hey, for once I don't have a question. Talker. I'm good. Thank you guys. Okay. You can argue. Sorry. All right. Well, I guess I, and this is probably taking less time than we thought because we, we have three people aren't asking questions, right? Three other commissioners. Mm -hmm. So, um, is there anything else that we need to cover, Kate? Other business is I would like to ask the other fellow planning commissioners if um, they feel like they have a good grasp of the overlay and if they would like a more comprehensive slideshow presentation on the overlay, what it means, what some of the provisions are. So. I want more information on what the extended overlay is that's off of Peachtree that goes back a number of streets. It's that's a, what I'm curious about. It's one and the same, but yes. I'm not exactly sure what you're referring so, to when you say the extended overlay. Well, because it does it, it does go into. Oh, you mean Southern One and Two? Yes. Oh, they're all Thank part you. of the same. They're all part of the overlay. I mean. No, I know they're all part of it, but are they? But I'm just curious. I think mean, they are still have the same rules. Yes. I mean, well, because then you're going into residential. along the along the main road. It's more dense and taller. As you get closer to the residential, it's it's there's you know a transitional buffer plane and, and heights the buildings come down a little based on that transitional buffer plane, but sub area one and two are part of the same overlay, right. but they do have a little bit different design criteria. I think in general, one of them is six roughly six stories or like, I realize that's not the right. way it's defined, but and then. And, and if you do certain things, you get bonus criteria and you can be a little taller, but there are, right. there are a lot of different nuances. Yeah. 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 Sub area one is six stories, sub area two is four stories. Okay. And sub area two, for example, is along Dresden. Mm -hmm. Sub area for one, one is along Peach Street, just has rough, roughly. Now, they, we have, there's a map that shows exactly where the sub areas are. So you have a question uh, well, we want an education session. See, I think, I think we should have advantage of all the maps so we can see where these sub areas are and we can understand exactly what the bonuses are so that if you want to go above six stories, how you gain a one-story bonus. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, by providing more public open space, a, a park or something, you can gain an additional story. Uh, by providing workforce housing, you can gain an additional story, a certain component of workforce housing. And there's a third one by providing, I think, retail on the first floor. Uh, there's some other component like that that allows you an additional story. So there's a whole number of things that, um, I mean, obviously this is an area of great interest to me, but I, and I'm not sure how many rezonings we're going to have in the overlay district, but to the extent that we will, or we'll be asked in the future to make review code amendments or something. I think it might benefit us all to know more of the details and understand also not just the details but what the principles are behind it. Because the overlay is really rich in the design ideas, why you're doing it and what kind of city or <coughs> urban village, let's call it, what kind of community you're trying to create through this. That's what the real goal, the real purpose of this so is. So the question is, do the, do the members feel that they, that they would benefit from you know, so that's my question. Yeah. I think absolutely. I think we have cool that from the beginning. Up here, happy to do that. Okay, and now I have a. <laughs> and, and may I, I add just a comment to that, if you don't mind? Um, we are happy to, you know, come to you, bring a PowerPoint to you, explain more details. Uh, I just want to to clarify though that in the overlay, if the criteria is met to develop in the overlay. Planning Commission will never see that. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah. right. It will come in through the staff for review and compliance and, and, and permitting and it moves yes. forward. Mm -hmm. So right. just so that you understand that, but 
I mean, we're happy to to come in and give you a PowerPoint and explain it in detail so you have a greater grasp, very much similar to what Mr. Hunter was referring to about street trees and sidewalks and design guidelines and performance bonuses and all those things, and we can do that. But see, I think that's important because, one, this is such a critical part of the city, mm -hmm. but the idea is probably in the future we'll be doing something similar with, I'm assuming, Beaufort Highway, or there'll be other areas of our city yeah. where we may have LCIs that will come to us, and so mm -hmm. it's better that we have an understanding more comfortable understanding of what this one is, mm -hmm. whether we're going to make changes or not, so that when we move forward, we're more educated. Okay. I guess I, I see. I guess I see two now. two ways to to come to One, I guess if we start with saying that more education is always the more you know, more knowledge <laughs> we have, the more knowledge we have, the better. I shouldn't say educate just not just education, but the more knowledge we have, the more informed our decisions can be. Mm -hmm. But there are two ways. So you could have it and have the you could we could, we could ask the, the the city. The staff to help us by putting together a, a work session like this, where we have a you know X number of time. Or if there were organizations out there uh, that had public meetings about you know that, that in educating the, the public in general about things. I mean, I as a citizen would probably attend. attend. I mean, so I think there are two ways of getting it of getting it done. You can you have the city make a you know a formal one or you know, if, I mean, there are lots of organizations um, that put on education se sessions that, that would be open to the public. Well, we can take a look at when we might be able to do something like that and, and, and let you know and, and, and get something. And open it up to a broader group because there are other people. I mean, if we have, uh, I mean, there are at least two, two commissions that are associated with planning and zoning, the ZBA the Planning Commission, and probably other interested parties inside the, the, the city, and, and they will be open. So, I mean, on a, on a personal level, I think you heard at least four people say, the more we know, the, the more informed we are. Is that, is that a fair way of? Yeah. And okay. what's really, I think, important for us uh, to make decisions is not to just know what the number is on the height or what the width of the sidewalk is or how many parking spaces there are per use but it's to understand the reasons behind it why is mixed use a key component what does that do that you would want that as a key component of the district and so it's all it's the ideas i think that in lot that that really uh, uh, give rise to the overlay that are key because at times then we have to make decisions on code and so on. We might have to go back or understand the underlying ideas so we can make a wise decision on a, a revision to a piece of code. The one thing I would I would say I got broaden it a little bit in that the we understand I certainly understand the importance of the overlay, but ninety percent of the city is outside the overlay, mm -hmm. and 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 those same. The, the, the same conditions, I mean, how much do we know and how much do we, how informed are we so we can make good decisions? Right. So I, I would not necessarily be in favor of something that limited it just to a discussion of if, we, you know, I'd like to know more yeah. in, in general. Now, granted, the overlay has got, there's a lot more specificity in there. It's, there's, you know, it's more current, I think, than some of the other things. Right. But, we were appointed as <laughs> citizens, yeah. not because necessarily because of our experience or our knowledge about underlying zoning. So, you know, where you live, you know, <laughs> and the the arterials along, you know, where you are, this isn't going to help. You know, I mean, that it may help you. With, with, you know, if something comes up, it doesn't yeah. apply to Ashford Dunway. Well, it doesn't matter. It applies right. to the city. Well, it applies to the city. Oh. What I'm yeah. saying is you need more information. You need information about what applies. You need to have both, is what I'm suggesting. No, I agree. I mean, knowledge is power, but I think that yeah. you have to okay. take ownership of the entire the whole city. The entire city. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, and certainly the Johnson Ferry, Shallowford area is a prime area for this kind, these Ashford kind of ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It might be lower scale. Oh, no, no. Ashford, Ashford Dunway. Dunway. Ashford yeah. Dunway. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah, yeah, like that whole little complex. Yeah. So you can make it a more right. No, I wasn't yeah. implying at all that there was. You know, so yeah. I was saying you have both pieces of it. Well, you need, you need, we need more understanding of the overlay, and we need more understanding of the other parts of 
that apply to? I think we probably need to look at, um, I think we need to go back and think about, you know, how, what's the best way to do this? What's the best approach? Kind of like what you were saying. You, maybe can you, you and, and I, maybe. And, and also that. look at rolling it into looking at, well, how do we want to deal with this with the comp plan as well? Yes. So look, yeah. we want to do the, the best thing to include the most people in the best way. So yeah. let's think about, what, let's think about that. Why don't we okay. do this then? What, if, what, you think about it. Okay. Come up with what you think, and, and you know, before our next meeting. Okay, so we'll have you know, just I'm not saying do anything. You just come <laughs> up with that, you know, but before our next meeting, come up, you know, and then and then suggest something to to, to you know to me, and I'll you know, would that be fair to everybody? Okay. Is that would that? That sounds great. You know, so we have something that just says, hey, just come up with an idea. You know, how would you approach this? How would you roll it out? How would you roll it out? How would you approach this? I'm not asking for an implementation okay. plan. Okay. I'm not asking to put anything together okay. in 30 days. Yeah. All right. Thank well, you. <laughs> no, no, I don't think. Let me mention one specific thing <laughs> is that Eric Fossman was the person who led, he's an urban planner, he led the, uh, the LCI study for urban collage at that time. He was with urban collage. But luckily, he's actually now, I think, on city staff as a so, uh, point one or point two kind of point. He's, he's worked for Clark Patterson Lee. He's uh, on the tenure with them. And I was told that he started the second half of the. This was part of the proposal that was accepted. So I, I'm not sure. Okay, well, we don't need to get specific. I mean, we don't need yeah, to do, 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 do that. We don't need to do that. Regardless, he, yeah. he, he's a wonderful okay. presenter and he understands okay. it from all the way from the general ideas to the specifics of zoning ordinances. Okay, well, it's like we, I don't think we could solve it here. Yeah. But I think we have a, you know, kind of a, so we've all, we've agreed that we would like to have more knowledge. Yeah. We've asked the planning, we asked Susan specifically to come up with an approach. And, you know, we'll have it by, before we meet again, we'll have something that says, hey, here's how we, we might be able to satisfy that. Okay. Is that fair? Yes. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Okay? I'm sorry. I, I'm bad at that. I'm trying to be, you know, make sure everybody is. So no, no, no. That's great. I think uh, you did okay. a great job of. So, do we have anything else? Yeah, so I'll ask Susan. Do you have anything? Yeah. Else? Okay. Good. I don't know if we need a motion, but we'll take a motion to adjourn. And, you know, the work session. Work session. We don't need a motion to adjourn the work session. All right. We don't need a motion. So we are hereby adjourned. We are hereby adjourned.